Well, hello, and uh, uh, hello from day one of uh, the Embedded World um, in Nuremberg. Uh, this is Nitin Dahad with and, and Francoise Pele and Sally Ward Foxton. Uh, we're covering for EE Times and Embedded.com. Uh, so, hi, Sally. Hi, and Francoise. Hello. Hi, Sally and Nitin. Uh, so uh, it's the first day, uh, another year in, in Nuremberg, and uh, I guess yeah, we've all been busy going around to different people, uh, talking to various people. Um, my highlight today, I, I suppose, was uh, interviewing uh, the CEO of uh, Altera, uh, an Intel company. I have to say that, but it, it's basically Altera and uh, Sandra Rivera. So we talked a lot about the um, uh, the new product they launched today, which is basically the um, Agilex uh, 5 FPGA with the AI fabric in it and basically a ten tensor unit and all of that. But then we also talked more broadly about the rebranding, uh, about the business, about the market. I also asked about the competitors, but obviously, you know, uh, Intel is best. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, I think uh, it's quite, uh, that's not my opinion, that's basically what uh, that's their, uh, opinion. their opinion. Uh, so uh, I, I, that was actually quite good. And then the other big news today, which I just uh, literally just uh, came away from foundries.io and uh, spoke to George. Uh, I, I'm not sure if he's a chairman or the founder, but um, uh, foundries.io was acqui acquired by Qualcomm. And this is really what George and uh, some of these uh, guys were telling me was uh, it was to um, sort of address uh, their IoT offer because uh, you know, the software development uh, platform for IoT uh, because they're focused on Android and uh, uh, Foundries.io's expertise is Linux and, and uh, Yocto. So I think they needed that team. So uh, he was telling me that they're going to operate independently and uh, as still as Foundries.io, but provide that expertise to, um, uh, to Qualcomm. But you know, as it is with all of these startups that they get acquired, uh, they operate within, but then they also you know, get that support uh, from the infrastructure. So that was quite interesting. So yeah, I've, I've got lots. I mean, I spoke to lots of people. I spoke to Callista Redmond at RISC-V. I spoke to um, the CEO of um, uh, Quintoris, which is the European Risk uh, um, Initiative. Uh, with, with the key chip companies and he told me they're too early to do any interviews he said um, maybe towards the summer they'll be able to talk a little bit more about what they're doing so uh, that'd be quite interesting but Sally what, do you, what did you see? So I've been all over the place today as usual um, I went to the AMD booth to see the new product they've just launched today uh, they've got a new generation of the Versal AI Edge uh, Gen 2 um, which is coming so they made some updates to this is programmable logic but with an AI engine hardened in it and they've made some updates to the AI engine um, which was exciting to hear about the double amount of compute in each tile so they're improving performance uh, they've increased the memory they've done a few other things but overall this device is really so they've added ARM cores as well onto the device so you now have pre-processing in the programmable logic then you have AI inference in the AI engine and then post processing is going to be in these ARM cores so everything kind of all on one chip and then they get you can get functional safety certification as well. So it's got their first customer for this is Subaru is going into Subaru ADAS uh, systems. So yeah, very interesting story. And uh, keep reading E Times to find out more details on the AI engine. Yeah, and and, uh, and I think that Subaru is an extension of what they've been doing already with Subaru because yeah we've we've covered that in the past as well, which is quite interesting. They're an existing, they're an existing customer, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a interesting use case. So I can't wait to see what happens. What about you, Anne Francoise? Well, I've tried to give some logic to my um, meetings um, and interviews today. So it was really about sensors, data processing, moving to the edge on directly on device. So um, I talked to Polyn Technology, which is a finalist of the Embedded Award, and um, for their chip, their NASP chip, a neuromorphic analog um, signal processing chip, and uh, it's really about a uh, row pre-processing of the data to lower the power consumption and lower the inference uh, latency and um, um, also about um, uh, data processing um, uh, Stefan Finbiker, Finbikner, um CEO of Bosch and Sensor Tech was said quite openly and directly uh, that um, there's always always pre-processing on the sensor. So it's really key. Um, Bosch sensor tech was uh, demonstrating to um, 
um, three axis accelerometers for wearables and hearables and um, an air quality sensor. Um, and he really um, highlighted the need to go always um, low power and to minimize the size so that sensors become ubiquitous. And um, talking about uh, data processing, um, um, that gives the transition to sequence communication. It's a bit further away, but sequence, uh, sequence communication, as we know, was about to be uh, acquired by Renesas, but eventually um, the bid was uh, ended. And um, Olivier Pose just explained that um, it is <laughs> exploring multiple options, strategic options. Um, and uh, he highlighted um, a key project um, financed by um, France Relance, uh, BP, B, uh, BPI, um, and um, they are going to uh, develop a um, chip uh, that is supporting their new radio uh, E-Red Cap standard, and uh, that's going to give uh, um, secure, um, low-cost and uh, very optimized uh, chip uh, for massive IoT. Wow, okay. Um, I mean, talking of that, I went across to the Synaptics booth and because um, uh, I was curious, I wanted to have a look at their new um, new Astra uh, platform and as well as Makina, which is basically their new dev kit for that. And it's a $250 kit, but what, what the product manager was trying to tell me was a lot of people don't really know how to train their models, don't know how to do uh, the stuff. So basically, it's enabling that kit, which is pre, pre-flashed and everything. So all you do is you, you, you just sort of apply your own data yeah. in that. And it's, it's, uh, it looks cool. I mean, I haven't tried it, but yeah, it, uh, it did look cool. So there's a, there's a lot of that going on in Synaptics. With that big launch, and I think you'll be you'll be looking at that uh, tomorrow. So yeah. hopefully uh, we'll we'll get more on that. But uh, Sally, what what else did you see? So I also went to Ambic or Ambic Micro. Um, they have a new product out, the Apollo 510. They've started the five series of uh, of Apollos. So Ambic do microcontrollers, but like ultra 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 low power. Um, so they have this sub threshold technology where they run it really really low voltage, and that's how they save power. Um, for the 510. They have gone with the Cortex M55 uh, with Arm Helium for ML acceleration. Uh, so a lot of what we're talking about was to do with um, AI acceleration on these really ultra low power devices. But uh, Scott Hansen, the CTO, had a long talk with him about this. Uh, he's saying you don't need an NPU. A lot of the, because when customers come, they think they need the NPU, they don't need the NPU. You can gain so much in software now. You can gain so much from different model architectures and it's proceeding really, really quickly. Um, they also write their own low-level software. They write their own kernels for ARM as well. So there's so much to be gained still from software, as his argument. You don't need an NPU. So. Okay. Um, I, I covered memory quite a bit today. I mean, I, I spoke to uh, the infamous Marco Mesca as well, and we talked about uh, some of the things there. And uh, But uh, I also caught up with a wee bit um, nano and uh, got educated on uh, RERAM technology and its advantages is over flash, uh, especially you know, below 28 nanometers. Uh, and uh, what well, their, their, their sort of strategy is you know, get uh, qualified with, with all the foundries that potentially want to compete with TSMC, I guess. Uh, so uh, they, they've gone uh, Dongbu, for example, in Korea, and they're working with them, but they're doing it with several foundries. And I think um, I kind of asked, you know, so how do you get your half a billion dollar valuation on the market? And basically, I think you know, it's basically that opportunity that's coming through all these uh, different avenues uh, for its technology, for the re-ram technology. Uh, so that's quite interesting. Um, I don't know if, uh, I think there's something there, but it's still very, very much in the building phases uh, for re-ram. So I don't know if any of you have got any sort of other things uh, so, yeah, plenty of interesting things here on the show floor. Um, I went out to see the uh, new dem the demo of the new Renaissance part uh, with the big AI accelerator in it, the, R2, the RZ-V2H. Um, that was a lot of fun to see that up and running. They always have the cameras uh, on the people walking by and doing person detection and so on. Um, their big thing is they don't need a fan. It's quite a powerful processor, but no, fa it doesn't get hot. Very power efficient, no fan. So definitely worth seeing that demo. Um, I also went over to see um, Ambient Scientific. I had a very interesting GP. talk with GP Singh. Yeah, uh, very very interesting architecture, uh, analog, uh, 
analog computing memory, which is exciting. It sounds like it's part analog, part digital. I want to follow up with this, follow up with them and, and learn more about it. Um, maybe in the next few weeks, keep reading eetimes.com to find out more about the analog technology and that. But yeah, this is for ultra low power, like for wearables and really tiny devices. So yeah, very interesting company. I think one of the themes I keep seeing today, I was seeing today, was uh, was around um, the power, yeah, you know, lower power, in, uh, and integration, yeah, you know, more and more and more integration on on one die, for example. And the other area, which um, I mean, we didn't really cover, was um, software and DevOps. And uh, so I spent some time with uh, Perforce today, and yeah, you know, they told me about their latest annual state of the automotive software development survey, which is conducted among 600 automotive professionals worldwide. And um, I mean, I wouldn't say too much, but uh, it's uh, it's it's a movement away from um, security and safety as, as a trend. To I mean, people still want the security and safety, but now they're looking for quality because the code is getting so bloated. You know, like you know, with Android, for example, you know, you have 50 million lines of code. Uh, so how do you how do you test for that? How do you do that analysis? So I think yeah, that's kind of getting big, bigger and bigger. So. Uh, quality is a thing that people are looking for, and, uh, and, and, and I don't really have much more to say. But I saw an interesting company that I saw first at, in 2019 at the Things Conference, where, and I saw Vinka as well today, Vinka Giesman, um, uh, it called Coitech, uh, and they're doing battery profiling. And uh, she was explaining um, to, today the CEO about uh, the importance of battery profiling for IoT devices, for wearables, for battery powered dip, the, or. Uh, uh, gadget, any gadgets, and and it's it was quite fascinating to see that and how their distribution model, with hardware from the distributors, their software goes on it, and they're providing. I think their announcement was some free, free uh, software that you can provide uh, in it, access through that. I'll write about it in, in e times or embedded dot com. Okay. But yeah, it's quite interesting. But yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Is there anything uh, you're looking forward to? Oh yeah, sure. Well, you were talking about software. Actually, I talked to uh, I touched a different subject that I usually don't cover, but it was about um, C, C++ compilers, and uh, it, the company was solid sense, and it was really really interesting, and um, and we we touched the Rust language, and because um, there's a quick qu key question about memory safe. Um, well, is it memory safe? Uh, so, um, and they have a team uh, of. Well, they're doing their thesis, and they have a team inside the company working on Rust. So I'm looking forward to knowing more about this. Yeah, I did actually cover Rust compiler on the Infineon Oryx uh, MCUs last week, and, and I think that I, I went across to their booth, and they've got a nice big display there, so it's quite interesting. But uh, yeah, um, anything else you from from you, Sally? So I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing some examples of generative AI on edge devices. I'm still looking to see these demos that hopefully people will have to. So I'm going to see Halo tomorrow. They just launched a chip for generative AI at the edge, LLMs at the edge. So hopefully they'll have a, a good demo up and running tomorrow. So yeah, stay tuned. Come back tomorrow. And uh, yes, do come back tomorrow. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be covering this again from day two. Uh, I'm Nitin Dahad and I'm with Sally Ward-Foxton and Anne-Francoise Pelly. We'll see you tomorrow.